Now I want to read you a few words again. But this time we're going to the book of Psalms of David. It's a very short chapter. But there's so much in it that we need to listen to and take to heart. And none of us are perfect. But we're to strive to be perfect. And that means strive to be perfect when He calls us home. Because when He calls us home, then we will be perfect. And it's been from the King James Version Bible. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father. Bless the Lord, we come to you one more time. To get into your word just a few minutes. And I pray, Lord, you reach down and touch hearts, anoint hearts, and my heart included, that we can grasp what you're saying to us and apply it to our own hearts and lives, that we can have a greater desire to follow you and to make sure that we have been born again. These things we ask in the lovely name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, Amen. And give us and to give us a word of wisdom from the Father, and Amen. Psalms 15. He starts out asking us two questions. But oh, what these script these questions are. But this is not the only place we find this in, in the Word. It may not be listed in the same way, but it means identical, the same thing. Psalm 15 and verse 1. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in in thy holy hill. Now this is scriptures. I'm I'm a reading that many don't want to hear today. Why? Simply because it gets us right down to where the rubber meets the road. No big eyes, no little use. No ifs, maybe, or buts. We are either saved or we are not. Verse 3, He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, decide with someone else, or decide to try to do him harm because he may have not have liked what he said or how he did something. Verse 4 In whose eyes a vile person is contemned of other words. The vile person all that speak is bad things contrary to the gospel and we don't like to be around them not that we judge them but because if we round them up it'll pull us down and we don't want to be pulled down but we want to hold on to the Lord Jesus Christ and his word and trust in Him and not in somebody else because there's no other that we can trust in that we can lean on and He'll take care of us all the way even to the end of the world. There's no one but Him. But, the, but He honoreth them that fear the Lord. Honor is respect. Those that fear the Lord. 
that believe in the Lord and know what he can do to the soul and body. Man can kill the body, but he cannot kill the soul. But God is able to kill soul and body and cast it into the lake of fire. He that sweareth to his own hurt and changeth not, he will tell the truth regardless. Now this is talking about the one, one that's going to dwell in his tabernacle and dwell in the Lord's holy hill. We got to be clean. We got to be saved. We can't dabble in the world and please God. No matter what we do, we can't mess around with the world and ungodly thing and please the Lord. And we can't change from something today to something else tomorrow or something else five minutes from now. We get to stand and hold fast to the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 5, He that putteth not out his money to usury, lend money just to get more back, or charge double to get back, some will do that. If you think I'm wrong, check upon some of these companies. It says title loan. See how much more they want back than what you're trying to borrow. And other people are the same way. People that are supposed to be our friends are supposed to be our Christian brothers and sisters in Christ. I know one particular person. They're not long, no longer living today. You could ask him to borrow anything, and first thing he'd say, when can you pay me back? That is not the instructions of God's word to us. Nor take a reward against the innocent. Take money to railroad the innocent when they know he is as innocent as he can be and let someone else that's guilty go free. It has been done many, many times, my friends. Whether we want to admit it or not, it has been done. And it will be done again. If God tarries a while longer before Jesus comes back and gets his children. He that doth these things shall never be moved. His home in heaven will be sure when the Lord calls his name to go because he had been saved, he had been sealed in that blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The scripture says, by his stripes we are healed and by his blood we are sealed. How many do you really think about the stripes he took for us so that we could be healed, that we could be set free, and could dwell in his tabernacle forever one day, called his holy hill. The holy hill, Mount Zion, the place that God loves, that God chose,
Or we want to dwell in that holy hill? Or do we want to just play games and take a change and not be sure that our name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life? And this is what this will get us to thinking about when we answer the questions. It's found again in number, verse 1. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? And then go back to verse 5 again to seal what he said. The ones that will dwell in that holy hill. He that put us not out his money to usury against the innocent. He that doth these things shall never be moved. That is a promise to those that love him. Those that have been saved and born again and washed in that precious blood of the Lamb that was slain on the cross between, between two thieves on Golgotha's hill on that day even while he was a dying. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Again, to tell the world how much he loved them, that he is willing to pay that debt so one day we could dwell in God's holy hill and abide in his tabernacle forever. And if we can't rejoice in that and that promise, and if we can't examine ourselves and see where we stand, then we have lived most of our life and in vain. Because we're saying we don't need to hear what he told us. And how he told us that we needed to live. So heaven one day could be our home. And we could dwell in his holy hill our most kind and gracious heavenly father it's again we come to you to thank you lord for another opportunity to get in your word once again and lord it's always a joy to get in your word and read it as it's written not add to it or not take away from it but take your word as you spoke it as you commanded it be written down by the old prophets and disciples. So I pray today you will touch every heart and let us be sure, help us to be sure that our name is recorded in that Lamb's Book of Life. And Lord, if anyone lost, I pray you save them. If any is drawn back and gone back in the world, we pray you bring them back and reestablish them on the old path wherein dwelleth the righteousness that you told us to seek after and to walk therein. And Lord, if it's sick, I pray you heal, deliver, and set free. And Lord, fulfill their need according to their need. In Jesus' name, in holy and most wonderful name, we do pray and ask you these things. Amen. And thank you, Father, one more time for your love and for your great mercy.